Good evening and welcome to our Lenten Reflection on this Thursday the 25th of March, the day we remember the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, our reflection tonight is led by the Reverend Perry Butler and first we have some music, Mary Mother of Our Lord. And now for our reflection by Perry. Today, the 25th of March, is Lady Day, the Feast of the Annunciation to the Blessed Virgin Mary. From Luke's Gospel. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. She was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob for ever and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And so here we have, once more, the visitation of God's messenger, Gabriel, to Mary. Until 1752, Lady Day marked the beginning of the new year. And a new beginning is what this feast is about. The beginning of a new chapter in the story of God's dealing with humanity. God's grappling with human disorder, waywardness and sin by entering in person into the life of his creation, taking on its burdens and sharing its sufferings. But this is for the future. For now, the drama of the story hinges on Mary's response, Mary's yes to God. Be it unto me according to thy word. Mary's response to the Holy Spirit's gracious overshadowing is to accept her divine vocation with humility, with faith and with obedience. Without knowing the consequences this acceptance might entail. Mary says yes to God. Just think. In that moment, the possibility that God's saving plan for our redemption, the tremendous beginning of the work of the new creation, hinged on the response of a young woman in a small city, tucked away in an obscure corner of the Roman Empire. Just think. Be it unto me according to thy word. Mary's response to God's word was not merely to hear it gladly, but to allow that word to transform her life, to shape it. Later on, her son will say in his public ministry, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. To be a hearer and a doer of God's word. And with Mary's response, Gabriel takes his leave. So for us, Mary becomes the prototype of the true disciple. And we too must be formed by God's word. That we too become not merely hearers, but also doers of God's word. Can this be possible, we wonder? But the angel reminds us, with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. And thank you for your words tonight, Perry. And now for the Nunc Dimittis.
Thank you once again, Perry, for your words. And thank you for joining us tonight for our Lenten Reflection. Please do so again tomorrow evening if you can at half five. Otherwise, if you can, do join us at six for night prayer. Good night and God bless. Bye for now.